Polycaprolactone has oxygen in two different chemical states. If you load a file that contains polycaprolactone spectra and look at the oxygen 1s, we can see the spectrum is reflecting the fact that we have two different chemical states for the oxygen and we have chemically shifted peaks that will help us to look at how parameter constraints alter the relationship between peak areas measured by fitting components to data. So we'll start off with a background for these data and we'll add a pair of component peaks. I'll use a chi-square for the fitting initially and we end up with a residual standard deviation that is close to unity so we have a, a reasonable fit for these component peaks to the data. However, if we look at the relationship between these component peaks, so I'm including in the annotation table for the components, the ratio column and press apply, we end up with a quantification table which illustrates that we do not have the relationship of one to one that we would expect. So what does this mean in terms of fitting spectra using two component peaks? Well, the thing that controls the fit of these data is the line shape as well as these parameter constraints. So if I adjust the line shape and say fit again, I end up with different values here simply because I've altered the line shape. So we can straight away see that the relationship of fitting component peaks to the data does depend on the line shape. But we can also see that the free movement of parameter constraints makes a difference if we examine what the current relationship is between these full width half maxima for these two component peaks. It's turned out to be a factor of 1.35 between these two component full width half maxima. If I put in my own choice for the, the same relationship, so I've made these components such that they have a similar, not quite the same full width half maxima, and then looking at the percent area before and after I fit, you can see that introducing a fourth half maximum constraint brings the relationship between these peaks closer to the expected ratio, but at the same time you lose the residual standard deviation. It's not quite such a good fit if I impose a parameter constraint. If we release the parameter constraint and then focus on the line shape itself rather than the parameter constraint in the first instance, we can then adjust the line shape to try and improve the relationship between these peaks according to our understanding of polycaprolactone. So I'm going to illustrate a line shape modification which is based on producing not a single line shape in the LA image but actually a sequence of them offset by an amount which is determined by these first two parameters so 0.31 comma 1 represents uh, a an offset in energy and then I add a sequence of peaks of decreasing size so this line shape here has now an element of asymmetry and the asymmetry is introduced by constructing a line shape from the LA line shape that we have here and a sequence of diminishing line shapes and I'll illustrate these better by changing the relative offset of these line shapes so here it is, this is the line shape that's constructed where I've exaggerated the difference between the different components that underlie the line shape and these represent the LA line shape that we see here as a sequence of peaks with diminishing amplitudes based on these values here. So if I would return this to the, the value that I started with, which is unity, we end up with we end up with a line shape that if we then fit to these data, 
we improve the relationship but let's now apply this to both of these because we would expect to see some asymmetry in both of these line shapes that agrees with Beamson and Briggs polymer database and once I introduce these line shapes here with, with asymmetry that is attempting to model the vibrational energy losses that are associated with these bonds in this polymer then we end up with a ratio that looks very close to the expected ratio for these oxygen 1s peaks so let's now just introduce another variation see how that alters the relationship of the peak areas so I'm going to change the LA line shape in the case of the single bond and make this more Gaussian so when I say fit I get even closer to the relationship that I would expect so the point here is that the line shapes that are used to create these peak models has a significant influence on the ratio of the peaks that you would obtain when you fit in terms of optimization and you can see the optimization has produced a reasonable residual standard deviation it's also produced a reasonable relationship between the peak areas and we've got the ratio we expect so the final test that you might perform is a Monte Carlo error analysis which calculates a set of relationships between component parameters that can be used to calculate the uncertainty in these peak areas and you can see that even though we have a good relationship in the first instance the Monte Carlo error analysis is suggesting that we shouldn't have such confidence in these percent areas as you might believe based on how stable the peak model is in terms of optimization you can continue to fit these data and you can see this is quite stable but when you introduce noise it becomes unstable so introducing a peak constraint which is calculated based on the current relationship between these two peaks and then performing a Monte Carlo and viewing the same quantification table we end up with by introducing a parameter constraint and these line shapes a peak model that ought to be more stable when attempting to measure the ratio of oxygen peaks in a polycaprolactone.